the first time we have points is equal to uh, nothing. So when we get here, we have to concatenate, add to. So that empty string, we add these points. And then when we go down, we assign points to exactly what it was here. So that the next time we come along through the loop, we add to that. So that the next time around, we have two points here to add instead of just one. So there'll be uh, the beginning point and the end point of that line. If, if it doesn't make sense, that's fine. Just uh, copy the code as it is. It should work and it's not working. So let me see what's going on here. Uh, by the way, let me remove this and just leave it as white because we don't want it to be very transparent. So let me see what I've done wrong. Oh, all right, there I misplaced the Y. I didn't add the Y there. So let's try again. And there we are. So we have these points that we wanted, the lines. Now the lines are on top of the circles and that's not what I want. So what I want is to, the drawing order is that whatever is drawn first comes at the top. So we are better off drawing this first. So let's do this. Let me cut these and actually put them below the circle, the circles like that. And let's see if that changes anything. Oh yeah, it does change, but we still have some of these still at the top. Okay, so in order to, to make uh, all the lines go behind, well, you could leave it like this, if this is what the kind of thing you want, but this is not what I want. I want the points uh, to be on top. So what I do is let me just create a variable here at the top and say elements, let me call it elements because I don't want to echo everything right now and to echo everything at the end. So what I will do is uh, I'll leave this there and that there. What I will do is I will add elements here. So I'm going to put a, uh, a dot and an equal sign to concatenate to add to elements. So I'll add like that. I'll also add this to elements instead of echoing them out. And then I'll leave this polyline echoed so that it's echoed first. And then again, I'll add to elements. And then I'll at the end of the loop, this is when I'll echo whatever the contents of elements are. This is done so that all the polylines are echoed first and then everything else is echoed at the end. This way the dots will be on top. Exactly, this is what I wanted. So this is awesome. So far, so good. Now, if we want to add values on top of these uh, points, that's fine. So let's do that. Let's try that now. But first of all, let's add the keys like the January, February, and so on. In order to do that, that's very easy. We add some text. So here, let me just duplicate this one. Elements, we add to elements. Instead of polyline, let's add some uh, text instead. Let's call this one text, okay? Now text has an opening and closing tag like that. Uh, sorry. And then in here, we want to add the key. Whatever the value of key is at that moment, we add it here. Now, this, uh, instead of stroke, we're going to say fill. That's the color of the text and it's going to be white. And then let's add a font size. Uh, matter of fact, let me just go to the top here and in here I'm going to say font size so that it's so general, uh, font size 12 pixels and also let's say font family. Let me add uh, Tahoma, Tahoma like that, okay. So this is some text and the text always needs an X and a Y value to know exactly where to position these. Now, what I want to do is I want to position the text at the top. So the value of Y will always be uh, a zero. So the Y is zero. And then I need to know the value of X. And we already know that num is the incremental position of all these. So I'll just put num and Y is equal to zero. So let me refresh that. Now the text have gone way up there. That's because they are 12 pixels each. So instead of zero at the top here, let me add 12 because that's the number of, uh, that's the font size we have 
So let me add 12 so that they can be at least visible in the y-axis. So just like that, we have the numbers there at the top. Now we also need some values on the points themselves. Now in order to do that, I can simply duplicate this. And instead of having them at the same position in the y, we're going to change that. We know that we want these numbers right where the circles are. So the circles are here and the x and y is num and y. So let me copy y and put y over there. Now instead of having the key in there, we're going to have the value. Something like that. So let me go and refresh and we see the numbers on the points. But I want them a little bit higher so they're not right on the item. So we have to reduce their y uh, values by a certain amount. So maybe let's reduce them by 10. And to do that, we go here on the y and do some math. Let's say minus 10 in brackets. But this is not going to evaluate because this is a string. So what we need to do is come out of that using a full uh, open bracket and concatenate and then close it like that so that this is a math expression. So let me see if that actually works. And you see the numbers have gone a little bit higher. Okay, so, so far so good. This is the complete uh, graph, but the cool thing now is that if you add more data here, it's going to automatically update. So let's try that. Let's try May, uh, June, let's try July as well. And August, let's try Aug. And let's add some bigger numbers here. Let's try something like 200 and let me put a 50 and let me try 350, something like that. And let's see what happens now. And when we refresh and you see the values show as predicted, though we have a collision here, so that's too high of a number. Now, in order to you see when the numbers become higher, we need more space at the top there. So let's just leave it at 100 just to be safe. Uh, this is the number I was talking about that leaves space at the top, if you remember. So let me refresh, and there we have. So we have a nice graph here showing us some data, and that's pretty much how we do it, and you can actually end here, and you can represent your data in this format. Now, if you want to uh, make it look cooler or something like that, more interactive, you can, because remember these are actually HTML elements. So they respond to animations and transitions and such things. So let me show you how to do simple. Uh, for example, I want uh, when I hover on uh, one of these points, I can actually add a link to these points to take me to other pages, for example. I want them to respond to the mouse. So in order to do that, for example, I can simply go to the circle. The circle is here. I can put this circle inside an, an A uh, tag to make it a link open tag and closing a tag over there. So this effectively makes all these links right now. So if I move over them, you see now I can actually click on this and the page actually refreshes. So they have become links now. So they can link to more data concerning this particular point. Also, I can add some uh, effects here. So let me go to SVG here. Inside here, I can put some styles at the top here. Let me do that. All right, so let me go to where it says circle because we know all these circles. Uh, let me add, sorry, let me add uh, styles for all circles during the hover uh, process. So I'll add one which just says circle, uh, like that, and one which says hover because I need to get the styles from here up there. So the stroke width, for example, uh, and the fill. Let me get this out of here and let me put it here. I put all the styles that I want to be changed when they hover up here. So instead of uh, that, we, we make it pink, for example. So during the hover, it would turn to pink. So if I refresh and hover and you see, the colors are actually changing on these points to show that they're being highlighted. I could even change the stroke width, for example. I could say stroke uh, stroke width to something like five pixels yeah something like so when I hover and it actually responds uh, accordingly like that so you can do that to any of these elements exactly and also you can add animation so let, let's add an animation as well 
So to add an, an animation, we create one and say keyframes. This is how we do animations, keyframes, and we name this one, let's name it move. Okay, just like that. So this is an animation called move and at zero percent what we want to happen is we want these things to transform so transform and we want the transformation to be a rotate okay we want this to be rotated 180 degrees like that and then i also want some opacity to be at zero let me duplicate that and change this to 100%. So at 100%, I want this to go back to zero degrees and the opacity to be at one, which is maximum opaque. And that's it for an animation. So we just need to assign this animation to anything we want. So for example, I want each polyline to have an animation of its own. So for example, here inside these tiles, I'm just going to say animation. So this animation will happen every time you refresh the page or you reload. So animation, the name of the animation is move and then I want it to last one second and I want to ease the animation and that's how you do it. So when I refresh now, you see how that happens. It comes in in one second and swoops in like that. But I don't like how it's all coming in at once like this. I want these to come in as individual parts. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a random number instead of everything taking one second. I want to randomize this one second. I'll say one point a number here. Let me say 1.0, another one will take 1.9 seconds and so on. Now to randomize this, what I will do is open close bracket like that. And I'm going to concatenate a random number here. So I'm going to say rand 0, 0,9. So this is going to be a random number between 0 and 9, something like so it will be one. Some of them will take 1.0, others will take up to 1.9. So let me try that again and you see the lines do that it doesn't look very smooth here because of the capture motion capture the screen capture software but it acts really smooth okay so let, let's try and load it from the other way around let me go back to this and say minus 180 degrees instead of 180 so it comes from the top and you see that's what happens also i can add an animation to these points for example so let me just go at the top here and just duplicate this animation and move. Let me just name it move two for simplicity's sake. In this one, we're just going to, instead of rotate, we're going to translate, translate in the X axis minus, uh, what's this, 200 pixels. And let me copy this translate and make it a zero like that so that's move two so let me assign that to the circles so i'll just copy this animation part up to there and paste it on the styles like so and also by the way instead of pasting here i could simply do it here where there are circles here matter of fact actually let me just do that this is circle because we have our styles here i can simply put the animation there oh unfortunately there's php in here which needs to be processed. So maybe I should just leave it there for simplicity. Let me take it back. And I have to change this to move two because that's the animation we made uh, last. So let me see what that, ha what that does. And that's what happens. So it just comes in and co uh, constructs the, the whole thing. So you can, add, as you can see, you can add animations, you can add transitions, you can make these links to something and so on and make your graph look awesome and interactive. You can, do, you can do so much, make things disappear when you hover on them, make other things appear and so on. Everything you can do with CSS3 can be done to these items. So I think I'm not forgetting anything and this, uh, this is how you create a graph uh, using uh, SVG and PHP. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will see you in another video.